this is one of my biggest ones. I'm practically out in the lounge to actually get this in shot, even though it's on its tiniest of mounts. I'll zoom in them a little bit. This is Hercoglossum. It is one of my favourite dendrobiums. Um, it's, uh, again, it's a strange growth habit, but that could be me. It does have fly flower spikes coming on the canes. Um, quite a few, a good number this year. And again on that cane up there. So basically, oh, and on that one, oh, you are doing well, aren't you? The way this grows for me, um, tiny little mount there, um, good root system, pushing out some new ones at the moment. They'll attach and wrap around the back. But basically, it pushes out new canes. They grow up. There they go. Okay. And it pushes out a reasonable number. Those new canes that have pushed up there won't flower. They may do later in the year in dribs and drabs, but they're not really destined to flower because they're new canes. Then when they get heavy enough, they droop down. And they look like these, and they hang around all over the place. Um, and that's, that's it, basically its growth pattern. Now if I treated this properly, and actually stopped watering it, those canes would stop, and they would stay that size forever. They would become deciduous after a couple of years, and they would do, be spent. But because I don't stop watering it, I do stop feeding it, but I don't stop watering it, I do give it dribbles of water on a regular basis through the winter, um, the canes keep growing. So basically you get a, a deciduous section back near the plant and then the following year it grows on a bit and the following year it grows on a bit and the latest growth will be the section at the end, sort of that section there. Um, the previous year will be this section here and that's the section that flowers. So this year, that set, last year, that section flowered. You can see the stumps there, yeah? This year, this section's going to flower. And next year, that section's going to flower. So instead of just losing the cane, it perpetuates. Now that may be how it naturally grows, but I've never heard of a dendrobium that does that before. Maybe I'm wrong. So that's how I grow this one. And um, the flower has to be seen. Um, the picture does not do it justice. It's one of those flowers that you have to get underneath and look up. It's translucent. It really is the prettiest of my dendrobiums by a long way. It's my absolute favourite and I'm looking forward to this coming out in flower so that I can do a separate video on it. So Herco Gloss on that one. Now, this one's Glomeratum. Um, this is my new cane as opposed to uh, the previous people's canes there. Um, haven't had this one long. It's, it's got an unusual trait because um, the canes have a purple tinge to them sometimes. I don't know whether it's as a direct result of light or what it is, but they, they, when they're up in the light and the sun's shining, they've got a nice purple tinge to them. It's a relatively new plant for me. I haven't had it long. It's, it's, it's got good roots in the pot. It's doing okay and um, must be reasonably happy because um, uh, you can see the older canes there, and um, that's the new one. So it's doing okay. Very, very attractive colour on the flower. Um, whether that cane will flower now, I doubt it. That's probably destined for next year. However, that one there may flower, because that, did actually, uh, that was actually on the plant last year. So in theory, that may flower. We shall see. So Glomeratum from a friend at the Orchid Society, that one grown from seed. Right, this one's Primulinum, I think that's pronounced, might be Linum, I don't know. But anyway, it, it, it's your typical deciduous dendrobium, it chucks out canes in all directions, they have leaves for a year and then in the autumn they dump their leaves. This is still in the process of dropping some of its leaves on last year's canes. Um, this one got mounted in one of these uh, holy baskets as I call them used to keep my water plants in things like that. I'm sure I did. Anyway, it did fire up some new canes last year at the wrong time. It sort of fired those little canes up almost towards the end of the year. So they didn't get much of a growing season as such. So they sort of ground to a halt. But I've got a feeling they may push on. That cane there might actually continue to grow. I don't know. But anyway, as far as flowering is concerned, the canes with possibilities are this one, 
uh, that's going deciduous now. This one possibly and this one possibly. But it can push out flowers on old canes. So there's no reason why an odd flower or two might actually come out on one of the incredibly numerous deciduous canes. Um, it did actually have quite a few of those when I've got it. I haven't actually had this plant too long. So primulinum, that one. And this sad looking little object is a nosmum. This is semi-alba, this one. Um, I got this at the uh, RHS show in London last year and it's been on the list for some time although it's a semi-alba and I would prefer the actual species this is all I've ever been able to find I just can't get hold of a decent plant um, it's got a new cane coming so uh, hopefully we'll get better things from it this year but basically the um, the cane here with the, uh, with the flower buds um, that was actually my cane last year not as large as the previous two, um, probably didn't like getting hooked out of its solid mass of moss and putting in something a little bit more suitable. Um, so this cane gradually went deciduous through the winter and now it's going gonna, it's gonna to flower. I think they'll may, there may be one, maybe two, but it is actually going to flower. So we, we'll get some flowers. And as far as mine's concerned, the flowers that it had last time, which it had when I got it, smelt of raspberries. No messing about, no ifing, no butting. If you get fresh raspberries and you get the juice on your fingers because you've picked them a bit heavy-handed and squashed them, that's the smell that this gives off. It's wonderful. And I'm really looking forward to getting hold of the, uh, the actual plant because the coloration on the flowers will be better. The semi-alba is obviously a paler flower. So I'm still looking for the, uh, for the real thing. Okay, so anosmum, that one. This is one of my uh, typical nobly hybrid types. Um, it's a no ID. I'm pretty sure I do actually know what it is, but without being definite. It's got a nice new cane showing there. That will be wonderful. Um, that cane there was last year's cane, half size. That cane there was last year's cane, full size. And that round there is one hell of a kiki. Now this one's due for a repot now. Um, what I'll do when I actually repot that is I'll take that kiki off and that can be a pretend new cane. So I'll actually plant that with the main plant down the bottom and hopefully that will push on and uh, pretend to be part of the main plant. I did manage to get two canes last year. At the moment I've only got one new one showing but this is a very reliable flower. Um, no winter rest whatsoever. This just got watered. Same as everything else, and it flowered from there right up to there. As far as I'm concerned on a nobly, that's pretty good flowering. It also pushed a couple of flowers out on the um, previous canes, on the older ones. Now this plant's got a little story. I used to work for a car rental company, and um, a firm called Double H, which produced probably about a third of the Phalaenopsis orchids in the whole of the UK, and I believe they're exporting now to other parts of the continent. A massive production line. If you uh, Google in on Double H orchids, you'll probably uh, find them quite easily. You can see the video of their production line. It's quite impressive. Nonetheless, they grow Phalaenopsis. I went to pick up one of our cars and um, the lady was uh, still unloading the boxes out of the car. She'd used our hire car to go round showing, showing off her wares, basically. And um, one of the boxes had uh, a strange-looking phalaenopsis poking out the top. And uh, as I was helping her with her boxes, as gentlemen do, um, I said, uh, that's not a phalaenopsis, that's a dendrobium, that's a nobly. And she looked at me rather puzzled in my scruffy car gear. And um, I said, you don't normally grow these. And she said, well, we, we've actually got them in. We're trying them. We're looking at the possibilities of going down that road. I said, yeah, they're all very well, but uh, some people have trouble getting these to flower again. You know, they, they, they need a proper winter rest and this, that, the other. And she interrupted me because she was in a bit of a hurry. And she handed me the box and she said, here, you know more about it than I do. It. You have it. So it was a gift. <laughs> so I appreciate it. It's a lovely flower on it, and it's a very reliable flowerer. But it is one of the uh, mass-produced nobilies. There we go, one with a story. 
another nobly hybrid. This is Prima Donna, so it's actually a, a named nobly. Um, this is a giant of a plant. It's a beast. You just can't stop it growing. It, it just goes mad. It puts up really good canes and it pushes them up well, all to a good size. We have actually got signs of new ones coming. Again, this is due for a repot this year, so uh, wait till I see a few more roots and then you can come out of there and have a new pot. But it flowers reliably right up the canes, two, sometimes three, I've even had one with four on. And there's more buds to come. This has been in flower since a fraction after Christmas, it's the middle of March now. Because no winter rest, no withholding water, and as a consequence, absolutely no flowers, obviously. It's just a beast of a plant. It just does so well for me, this one. I love it. Beautiful colour, prima donna. Nobly hybrid. Another beast of a nobly. Again, lovely, reliable flower. Flowers don't last as long as the uh, previous one, prima donna, but they're still very attractive and um, a, a well worth, a worthy plant basically. It flowers the full length of the canes most years. It's uh, in the process of uh, throwing up its new ones for the year. Uh, I can see one, two, three quickly. Hopefully it's going to do more than three. I wouldn't mind four or five on a plant this size, but three will be good. Some of these canes like this one, that is a new cane, but it hasn't actually flowered. It didn't come in this year. That probably means it will push out flowers in the middle of the summer or something silly. My noblies do tend to flower on and off because of the treatment they get. Again, this was an absolute mass of flowers and was in flower for a very long time. It's starting to get on the tatty side. Noblies do this. After a while, you'll have more deciduous canes with no leaves and stumps of where the lovely flowers once were than you have got leaved canes. So the plant starts to look a bit tatty. Now, obviously, if you choose to, you can take those tatty old canes off. But if you do that, you do reduce the strength of the plant. You reduce its ability to store nutrients. That's what those old canes are for. So you take a risk. Um, what I try and do is tuck them into the middle. So when I rearrange the canes and the new ones, I try and get the new ones to grow up around the outside of the plant and strap up the tattier looking ones in the middle of the plant so that the nice new canes grow up around the outside and they hide them. As they do occasionally still throw a flower out now and again, but nonetheless they support the plant. They, they ought to be kept really. Um, uh, and that one there was not me. That was chopped off when I got it. I wouldn't dream of doing such a thing. And if I was going to take a cane off, I'd take it off at the base rather than just halfway down. That's just silly. Okay, so another no ID, nobly hybrid. And another giant of a plant. Again, this one grows really well for me. It does have a tendency to chuck kikis out now and again. Um, some nobly types do actually do that. Um, this is Cassiope with a question mark on the end. Um, the guy I bought it from was absolutely sure that what it, that's what it was called, but he had lost the label. Now, I can understand not having a label, but actually losing one, you need a clip around the ear for things like that. Look after your plants. Um, but basically it grows lovely big canes, it grows them in profusion. This has currently got, you can see the sort of new canes coming up through the middle there. And that one's got bugs on. You're going to get some treatment later. I am starting to get a few bugs as the uh, longer days come in. But it throws out new canes like they're going out of fashion. It's a very vigorous plant. It's also a very, very, very attractive flower. And it's another one of those you, you need to hang it so that you can get slightly underneath to view the flowers at their best. But they don't last long. And that's a nuisance value. It's a lot of plant with a very attractive flower, no fragrance, and they don't last long. You're lucky to get 10 days out of the flowers. So it's an awful lot of plant for not last long lasting flowers. But the flowers do come and go throughout the year. So at the moment I'm putting up with the uh, vast amount of space it takes up because the flowers are just so nice. So Cassiope, we think that one is.